Hello friends, this video on cell, the unit of life part 14 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now we will talk about chromosomes because chromatin are present only in the resting stage of the cell. So what are chromosomes? These are rod shaped structures. They are formed when chromatin condenses together when the cell is about to divide. So let us suppose these are your chromatin threads. So they are all thread like structures randomly arranged. So this is your chromatin. So later the same threads will assemble together to form a structure like this and this structure is known as chromosome. So this is chromosome and this was chromatin. So when you look at any organism, let us suppose if you look at human beings, their body is made up of cells. If you look at any one particular cell, you can see the nucleus. Now if you concentrate only on the nucleus, inside the nucleus you will have this small thread-like structures called chromatin. Now these chromatin later will condense together to form chromosome. Again if you observe the chromosome in detail, you will have structures here which are nothing but the genes and these genes contain the DNA and this is how DNA will look like. This is how the structure of DNA is. So they have specific strands like A, G, C, T. So we will talk about all that later. So for now you just get an idea about what is chromosome, what is gene, where is chromosome located. So you should know where the things are present and this is what decides the characteristic of any organism like we also inherit so many traits from our parents or grandparents so that inheritance comes from these genes so now you understand the importance of chromosomes in a nucleus and you also would have understood by now why nucleus is so very important for the cell because without if you don't have nucleus you don't have chromatin chromosomes the cell will not be able to uh, divide so there will be no reproduction there will be no formation of further cells so nucleus that is why is the control center of the cell so these chromosomes are composed of DNA and nuclear proteins. They contain information for inheritance. That's what I told just now. Now talking about the structure of chromosome, what all it consists of? There is a structure called centromere. So what is centromere? It is this central portion of the chromosome. So it is the primary constriction of the chromosome. So here it constricts, it connects the sister chromatids. Now in a chromosome, each of these is known as a chromatid. So one chromosome consists of two chromatids. Now since both these chromatids belong to the same chromosome, they are known as sister chromatids. So these two are connected at the center. So centromere connects the two sister chromatids. There is another structure called kinetochore. What is that? These are disc-shaped structures present on the sides of centromere. So this central region where the two chromatids are connected, there you see disc-like structures like how you see here. These disc-like structures are known as kinetochores and they are composed of proteins. So these are, some, these are the two important uh, parts of a chromosome. Now based on how the centro based on the position of the centromere in a chromosome, chromosomes can be classified into four types. And what is the basis of classification? The position of centromere. So what are these four types of chromosomes? Metacentric, submetacentric, acrocentric, and telocentric. So these are the four types of chromosomes. So let us look at each of them. Metacentric centromere is located at the center. That means this is how the centromere is located. So this length and this length is going to be the same. That is centromere. So both the arms are of equal length in case of metacentric. Submetacentric centromere is slightly deviated from the center. So in this case, one arm is short while the other arm is long so they are of unequal length in acrocentric centromere is highly deviated so in submetacentric it is slightly deviated and here it is highly deviated 
So here one end will be too small and the other end will be too large. So one arm is very long and the other is too short. Telocentric centromere is at the end of chromosome. So basically it is something like this at the end. So the other arm doesn't exist at all. So there is just one arm in this case. So we'll have a picture which will tell you which one is which type. So which is this? Both the arms are of equal length. So this is metacentric. Here they are of equal length. One is very small, one arm is very small while the other arm is very large. So this is acrocentric. What is this? It is at the end. Centromere is at the end. So this is telocentric. What is this? It is slightly deviated. So they are of unequal length. This is submetacentric. So these are the four types of chromosomes based on the position of the centromere. So like now that we have discussed about the different parts of the nucleus, their structures and how do they perform their function, let us quickly look at the significance of nucleus. They have the control center of the cell, helps in movement. When we say movement, it is talking about movement of ribosome, proteins and RNA through nuclear pores between nucleolus and cytoplasm. So exchange of materials happen through nuclear pores. Cellular reproduction, that is because genes are contained inside chromosomes which decide the hereditary characters and also chromosomes play a crucial role during cell division. During cell division, the chromatin will form chromosome and then the chromosome will actually help in all the stages of cell division. So these are some of the very important properties of nucleus without which the cell will not be able to perform its expected function and that is why nucleus is termed as the control center of the cell. So now let us talk about the number of nuclei in a cell. Now I spoke about, I spoke a lot about the nucleus. Now, how do we know that how many nuclei should be present in a cell? So, is it necessary that one cell has to have only one nucleus or one cell can have more than one nuclei? Now, the number of nuclei in a cell actually varies. And depending on that, cells can be divided into three types. So, cells can be one of the following types based on the number of nuclei in the cell. So first is a nucleate, that is the cells without nucleus. Now you might wonder how is it possible that cells can survive without nucleus? Now do you think that nucleus does everything inside the cell? Nucleus is involved in reproduction. So if a cell doesn't have a nucleus, they will not be able to reproduce. But they can remain as dead cells. For example, the tracheids, they are the dead cells. So similarly in plant tissues, we spoke about so many cells which were like dead cells. They only help in mechanical support or structural support. So those are all anucleate cells. So one such example is the mature RBCs in human beings. They do not have a nucleus. Again, there are, there are other types of cells with, which have only one nucleus. That is uninucleate. Uni means one. So uninucleate cells, now most cells which we see around us, they are all uninucleate, that is with one nucleus. And the third type is multinucleate, that is a cell with many nuclei. So one such example would be the skeletal muscle cells, the, the muscle cells with striations. So there we have multiple nucleus in a single cell. So depending upon the number of nuclei in a cell, a cell can be anucleate, uninucleate or multinucleate. So with this we end our discussion on the nucleus and I hope you understood what makes nucleus the control center of the cell. Now due to the presence and absence of this nucleus, we have the division of eukaryotic and prokaryotic cells. Eukaryotic are those with true nucleus, prokaryotic are those which are without the nucleus. So let us quickly have their distinction because now you will be able to understand the difference between the two properly. Eukaryotic cells, they have a well-defined nuclear membrane. So now you know what is a nuclear membrane? The double layered structure outside the nucleus which separates nucleus from remaining things in the cytoplasm. Whereas in prokaryotic, there is no defined nuclear membrane. 
here you have a distinct nucleus no distinct nucleus so in prokaryotic all the genetic material is just lying scattered in the cytoplasm cell organelles are present in eukaryotic they are absent in prokaryotic region bounded by nuclear membrane contains dna and protein so basically this is the composition of the nucleus here undefined region with nucleic acids is known as nucleoid so nucleoid is not a structure exactly it is just this place inside the cytoplasm wherever we see more of nucleic acids that is known as nucleoid examples of eukaryotic cells would be all plant and animal cells prokaryotic would be bacteria and blue green algae cells so this is how the cells look like so now you see the nuclear membrane the double layered structure the nucleolus and all other cell organelles whereas in prokaryotic you don't see any nucleus or nuclear membrane it is just that there is one particular region where the entire genetic material is located thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online test get free study material find tutors and mentors thank you once again